everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved this waterfall and french ombre bling look of course it's two different hands always i recorded this a long time ago and i know i asked you guys a long time ago if you wanted to see it and of course you said yes and here i am seven eight months late um to the party but nonetheless so here is her previous set and you're probably like i remember this set it's from a long time ago yes <laughs> this is our previous set and it was five i think five weeks old look how good it looked these were so hard to take off like emotionally but also literally i've got this new tool now that i wish i could go back in time and um use for this set it's a tool that i got from a local nail supply place here in my area called nail supply glamour um but it's a tool i posted it on um i have a um facebook page for patreon members you know shameless plug link in bio to join the patreon and i posted the tool and um some ladies had it as well and um expressed how helpful it is to them and so yeah i wish i did i'm using some old nippers as you can see and I usually go around and take a um, narrow kind of pointy bit, as you can see right here, and kind of create a ditch or a canal next to the crystal. That way I can grasp underneath, well, not literally underneath it, but kind of, I mean, level wise, and um, be able to pinch it and lift the crystals off. Now, removing these crystals, I'm going to leave a little bit in here for you to see. This took me about between i think an hour and a half and two hours to take off all these crystals it's ridiculous <laughs> so you guys are really seeing the quick part of it they were very hard to come off and some of them if you remember not that you would at this point because it's about a year apart these sets are <laughs> i mean not the sets but me recording this and editing this and getting this out to you and from the time that this was created um so I did one of the nails with the flame crystal design and my client, she actually went home and did the, added the other bling. She had a flight, it was running late, yada, yada, yada. So just so you can know what happened there, if you kind of noticed there, peeped it. So I had to go <laughs> fast, <laughs> speed this up for you guys to see all this. Cause like I said, it did take me between an hour and a half and two hours and my hand was killing me and I had a literal blister. So those tools i definitely recommend um again it's also you can find out like she in but if you know also 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 be a part of the patreon um and be in the tablet facebook group it's a private group just for other you know people who love nails and yeah yeah <laughs> so now i am cutting the length down my client i remember she was like the this length has to come down and her current nails are so much shorter they're like the length of her natural nails underneath the enhancement um currently as she's slowly taking them down shorter 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 <laughs> so i'm just matching them um corresponding you know the pointer on one hand to the pointer on the other and so on and so forth i'm using the mellow yellow bit from atwood industries just because it's a little bit of a less aggressive bit it's still an aggressive bit but less aggressive in a way and I feel like it is easier to take down the length because it is a little bit thinner. I filed off what she already had going on. This set is sculpted. So please watch the video if you didn't, if you want to see me sculpt out this set the hard way. <laughs> so now I'm just thinning it out. And the reason is, uh, well, I'm thinning out further. The reason is the glitter needs to be encapsulated in the nail. Um, we're going to be adding crystals and everything else like that. So the last thing I want is for the nails to be bulky. So that glitter must go inside the nail. So we're going to encapsulate it within the nail. So I'm getting these down, reducing them, taking them down slowly. It may look scary, but we still have a little bit of product in between the natural nail. Well, not even a little bit. There's a fair amount between the natural nail. And where I'm using the e-file 
So as you get, as a general rule, as you get closer to the natural nail, you want to get less aggressive in the bit that you're using. So we can step down to like a regular like fine grit carbide bit after this. And then after that, you can go with like a sanding band if that's your style. I'm not, I don't like sanding bands. They are a semi waste. I'm sorry if you like them. Well, if you like it, I love it, of course. <laughs> so I'm just showing you guys the thickness that um, we took it down to so you can see how that much thicker that one that I showed was compared to the one next to it so I just want to show you guys that so we got that thickness down to ensure that we can place our glitter gel in the nail comfortably so now I'm going in with the cutie patootie bit from light elegance and this is a diamond bit and I'm using it at about seven to eight thousand rpms and this bit has that diamond texture. And it's basically a replacement um, for like a sanding band. Of course, we had a, have our cross cut bit, but I mean in the way of, as far as like texture, it has that sanding band, sanding paper type texture, but just in metal form. That way we can disinfect it and use it time and time again. And we have a more precise, even texture on the actual bit itself. Sanding bands can be a little wonky sometimes and that can be harmful to the natural nail plate if you're using it there. And um, you know, it can dig in and wobble. Even if your e-file doesn't vibrate, just having that slight, like that cylinder shape be slightly off, it can cause, you know, issues, vibration. So now I'm going in with the itty bitty bit, again, from Light Elegance. I've used in the past the skiver bit from Atwood Industries. It's comparable. It's shorter, not as thin, but it does a pretty similar job. So I'm using that to remove the cuticle. And then after that, I'm using the crosscut bit. And you can get a crosscut bit from Atwood Industries. Or again, you can get the shaper bit from My Elegance. They're pretty equivalent for the most part. So I'm using this to further, like I said, take down product to both the surfaces. You can see add some texture. So our new product adheres with no problem to our old product. And further debulk a little bit, as I was mentioning, you want to go down in aggressiveness and bit aggressiveness as you get closer to the natural nail. So now I'm cleaning off, cleaning, <laughs> cleaning off the nail, getting them all dusted, and I'm wiping them with some Pro Cleanser, sprayed some alcohol, getting them all clean, dehydrated. And I'm going to use Air Bond from My Elegance, and then I'm going to be using Tack as well. And then I'm going to use Jimmy Gel just as a base. So I'm going in with that air bond and I'm going to let it dry at least 10 to 15 seconds. And then I'm going to go in with the light elegance tack for the tack. I'm going to apply it from the actual natural nail down over to our previous enhancement. Just to make sure we have adhesion from natural nail all the way. Just, you know, it doesn't hurt. Make sure layers are sticking together, adhering together. So now I'm going in with the Jimmy Gel just to give a smooth, even base. Something to file down to so we don't have our glitter gel just straight on the natural nail or on our enhancement if we, you know, got the thin thinness where we wanted it to go. We don't want to apply, you know, color or whatever and have to file it off. So I was going to use Ideal Pink Builder. My client didn't prefer that color. She preferred this color that I had on hand. So I'm going to be using um, the nude number five from um, color from the gel pot. And um, it's their builders in the jars or whatever. <laughs> so I'm using that to create our nude kind of nail bed color. Well, for this, for one hand, as you notice at the beginning of the video, they're ombre opposite. One I call like a kind of waterfall ombre effect where it's coming from the cuticle area falling down. And the other is more of like a traditional, as if you can call that traditional, I'm playing dangerous with words, um, French ombre, a glitter ombre. Um, and those um, crystals just accentuate that ombre. So the crystals are gonna mimic where we put the glitter at. So for this hand, the glitter will be coming from the cuticle area down. So I got to make sure we have that nude color or that nail bed color on the actual free edge portion. 
So I'm just kind of, not kind of, I am <laughs> applying a slip layer, getting a bead and just floating that down simply. And I'm going to be applying multiple layers just to get that opacity down. And um, I didn't catch it all on camera, but we added a little more to that. And now I'm wiping it because I need to shape it up some. <laughs> The reason is because we are going to be doing a permanent design. And what I mean by that is the design is going to be encapsulated. It's just essentially another fancy way to say an encapsulated design. Um, so with the product being in the nail, um, we are at risk of filing it off when we go to file and shape. So I want to get my shape pretty good now because the nude can be filed down. It's not going to affect it. We got to get our shape together because these nails were a bit longer. We've cut them shorter, which means we've kind of changed the shape or the perception of the shape. She didn't want these too narrow. She didn't really want them coffin shape. She preferred tapered square. She said square, but I was able to like tapered square, right? Right. <laughs> so I'm taking them down um, some as far as, you know, getting the shape together. Again, if we left it real bulky and we applied our glitter or anything else we're trying to encapsulate in the nail, when we go to do this shape later on in the process, we'll be filing off our glitter, our flowers, our foils or whatever we put inside the nail. So before you encapsulate, make sure your shape is pretty much where you want it to be so you don't have to have as much risk of filing off your encapsulated design so now after I clean the shape I'm going to be going in with like elegance tack again um the reason it's not going to hurt anything it's going to make sure the layer that we have already is going to adhere to our next layer of product whatever that may be so I'm just applying it and then going to go ahead and cure it in the light so this is the ombre that my client chose a while back. I had posted on Instagram a few options. We have this dreaming in Dubai option. It's like a gold ombre, which I did. I put up a video of that. I did this one. It's the be in your bonnet ombre with these cute pink opals and everything. I didn't record a video for that for the tour guide. Oh, you know, I actually, I think I recorded the video for tour guide and not the dreaming in Dubai. I believe my apologies. Um, so she chose the mango crush one i mean we could i was just having fun and posted online who wants to come in i wanted to do some bling ombres i was just feeling them i thought they were cute <laughs> so again this is the one she chose so we're going to take that product apply more towards the concentration of our ombre for this hand it's going to be towards the free edge for the other hand it's going to be towards the cuticle area so we're going to apply a greater concentration of product um where we want the ombre to be concentrated and then we're gonna apply less and less product as we fade it down um, I like to be aware and take the actual glitters into consideration so you'll see me kind of nitpicking and picking glitters and moving them around um, just so you know it looks very scattered it doesn't look too perfect if you will and um you know, if the glitters, these are kind of a medium chunky glitter. You see those iridescent ones, those uh, hexagonal ones. Sometimes they get even bigger than that or different shapes or whatever. So generally speaking, I like to apply the keep a higher concentration of those bigger glitters again towards where we want to start our ombre. So once we get the ombre right, I'm going to encapsulate this. And I like to use Cool Gel from Light Elegance. I also recommend their Extreme Gel as well. I really think a um, medium viscosity gel is where to go, especially when doing a process like this. So I just applied a slip layer, which tells our gel where to go. It helps, you know, it peeps the scene, make sure everything's good. And then we apply our bigger bead to kind of settle in and we dance it around using builder gel is a very light touch it's a delicate product she just minds gravity and mother nature and you know yeah it's very light touch it's much different than acrylic because acrylic can be very aggressive 
with the application because one, it air dries. So the longer you're using it, the stiffer it will become. So you can be pat, 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 patting it. And then, you know, after about 30 seconds, if you're trying to perfect it, you have to like pat, pat, pat. <laughs> um, but with Builder Gel, you, you don't have to. It's, it's delicate. It's light. A lot of times you're staying on the surface of the product. You don't want to move too much so you don't create air bubbles. So, you know, if you're aggressive, you might want to go with acrylic. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind if you're playing around with gel application or getting into it, that it's a lighter process. And also, shameless plug, if you are trying to get into builder gel or you're trying to perfect your craft, whether you're a hobbyist or, you know, in nail school or a licensed nail technician, I am doing in-person one-on-one classes. I'm in the Dallas, Texas area. If you're interested, email me at tabithascott.classes at gmail.com and I'll get you pricing information, um, available dates and everything like that. I am now also offering three-day boot camp style classes. I've been doing two-day had feedback and ladies were like, I wish I had one more day. I mean, we packed so much in there, but so I'm offering that now. If you're interested, again, email me at tapscott.classes. I'm booking now the rest of 20, what year is it? Shoot, 2022. <laughs> I was about to say 21. I had a blank. Uh, anyways, so back to the video. I um, got our shape off camera. Um, as you seen earlier in the video, I like to flip my client's hand to get my shape. And after I gained my shape, got it together, I'm going in. I'm using a um, safety bit. This is ceramic one. I have no preference between carbide and ceramic. I can't really tell the difference. Ceramic is supposed to pick up less heat, which you really shouldn't have much heat if your e-files on a good speed and you're not just, you're not having to use a lot of pressure and um, you're lifting the e-file up frequently off the nail as to not build up a lot of heat to get a lot of friction going on. So I had this on hand. I've since, I guess, I think retired this bit. Yeah. So after that, which I wanted to debulk, I tend to slightly over encapsulate. I just never want to file off my design because that's such a heartache. You do that a few times in you know what heartbreak is. <laughs> so I try to kind of go a little extra so I can slowly take it down. Um, so after I debulked, which I call it debulking with that ceramic bit because gel is so soft to vial, so that bit really reduces it easily. So after that, I'm using, as you see, the cross cut bit. I'm using it to further refine, um, taper the cuticle area, get it nice and flush, and then smooth out any residual lumps and bumps and also I'm leaving a buff surface so I don't have to use a hand buffer which I absolutely love hand buffers and me I only use when I have to usually doing art at the end of the surface so surface surface so I don't like using them I'm using that itty bitty bit um just to kind of clean up around the cuticle area I absolutely love that bit for that if you you know you had a little product that may have touched it happens you can clean it up. So now I'm using the Buffy bit from Light Elegance just to further clean up the actual eponychium around the cuticle area. The cuticle, you guys, grows on the actual nail plate. So what I'm cleaning right now is not the cuticle. That's a little fun fact, which I'm sure you know if you know you watch a few videos here. Um, so we are buffing off any, like I said, dead skin residual product and everything like that trying to get it smooth it's not going to be perfect but we get it nice and smoothed out and you know if your client will consistently apply cuticle oil things like that we can work together to get you know get those calluses kind of sorted out and everything like that that rough skin minimized so the crystals i'm using is like this peachy orangey mix so I have some Swarovski. I think they're rose peach shimmer. I also have um, the, I think they're just plain rose peach crystals. Um, and we're just gonna be using a variety. So now I am using some crystal gel. And this is just a sample one. 
that I have and it's a little bit thicker viscosity. So I'm applying that to the area I wanna put the crystals and then I'm floating over a no wipe top coat. Floating over it. Now this is the tricky part, but it's so worth it. So we apply that crystal gel, it's thick. That brush of the top coat, while it's wet, let me gather. So while that crystal gel is wet, sorry, I hit my mic. Um, you want to apply that top coat that no wipe top coat on top of it but don't dig into it and mix them all up together like tuck it in like leave it under there so that way we can sink our crystals into that gel simultaneously when we cure we will cure that gel and that top coat that crystal gel on that top coat. So we get that thickness, which is gonna hold those crystals in. And that top coat is gonna finish with a shiny, non-tacky surface. And it will slightly kind of, you know, suction around it a little bit. Um, it slightly, slightly, slightly um, can shrink there. In an old iteration iteration of um, gels, a lot of times you get some that will shrink like noticeably. So we don't really deal with much of that lately these days with quality brands. But on a small level, that's what we'll get. So we want to be able to, we want to apply that crystal gel thick enough so that those crystals can sink into it. Um, but if we just did that and cured it, then we have to go through in between all those crystals and seal around them with top coat because we still want our nails shiny. So this is killing two birds with one stone. Now let me tell you the con. <laughs> As you might be able to see slowly is that it's a little more liquidous in a way even though this is can be a thicker gel and I encourage you to use one that is thicker, even thicker than this if possible. Um, we want to make sure I use this one again. It was a sample, um, but I wanted to make sure that our crystal gel was crystal clear. I had some other ones, but they weren't quite, quite as clear because I want to make sure that my glitter is still, you know, popping and coming through, of course. So I strategically use that crystal gel for its clarity. Um, but if you have a thicker one, you know, depending on if you don't need if you're working over like a solid color or a certain design, you may not need that clarity. So if you have a thicker one, use a thicker one. But this one's okay in its thickness. Um, so as you see, I applied that crystal gel pretty thick, applied that top coat, just skimmed over the top while it was still wet. And now I'm sinking those crystals into it. We're not trying to sink it um, so the crystals are completely like covered in the gel because our crystals can't catch the light and that would be similar with you know one of like the nail commandments I think it's the number one is that you do not top coat over your crystals so we don't even do it like indirectly so be mindful of that <laughs> we don't want that gel to cover the top of our crystals we want it to go up the side of the crystals, the perimeter of the crystals, sink the edge of it in. Because if you just set it on top of the gel, the gel physically holds it, hugs it, it holds it. Um, nail glue has a chemical bond. So you can put the tiniest dot under a crystal of glue, set the crystal on top, give it some time to dry, and that crystal will be held pretty good still need to be sealed in and things like that but that aside you can set a little tiny dot of gel and put a crystal a bigger crystal on top and cure it and lift up that crystal that gel won't be you know fully cured because the light's not able to penetrate it unless it's like a clear crystal crystal which i do have an unfoiled crystal in the mix i'm using um the swarovski crystal ab unfoiled um, so that's some of them that are in the mix and I'm using regular crystal AB, those rose peach shimmer and the regular rose peach crystals. I believe that's everything that's making up this crystal mix. So just so you know, I didn't fully mention it. 
Anyways, that was a tangent. So um, that's the only way the light's going to penetrate through the crystal. If the crystal's not foiled, it's, you know, some version of clear. Otherwise, um, it's not going to happen. So I say all that to say that's why we need an excess of crystal gel. So that gel can literally come around the very edge of the crystal. Um, and then when it cures, it'll physically hold it in because the gel is kind of on top of the crystal, but not over it you know what i mean so i digress <laughs> so i'm just placing these crystals trying to get them right i said i'm moving because of the ombre the nature of it we want to apply more crystals at the start of our ombre which i mean i say the start of the ombre would that be the center of the nail i mean that's where the blend starts but you know what i mean <laughs> so at the tip of the nail we want that higher concentration so we are going to apply more crystals, bigger crystals, and as we go up, we'll spread them further apart, less crystals and some smaller crystals. I did and do um, in this set, I like to bring some of the bigger crystals up just a little bit um, because having really big crystals towards the end and towards the free end, free edge can make it look bulky. Um, so what I try to impart in people when doing bling, if you can keep your bigger crystals, your bigger sized crystals towards the center of the nail. Go ahead and do that. If you can strategically, you know, place them based on the design. Um, yeah, go ahead and do that. So you can see my biggest and bigger crystals are not right at the edge. The smaller ones are even at the tip. Um, we want to keep them small. So you see in its full glory how tedious this can be. Um, because I'm doing a lot of wiping because again, that gel is kind of moving and running and it was slightly frustrating. I will admit that to you. Um, but at the end of the situation, <laughs> sealing around all these crystals with top coat would have been way more tedious and time consuming. So, um, Although this isn't the ideal or perfect situation, it was much better than the alternative. And um, like I mentioned earlier, if you have a thicker crystal gel, it will help this process a little better, make it a little easier for you because it won't move around as much. You will still get some movement, movement more than likely because we applied that top coat on top, which for the most part is going to be um, you know, is it less viscous? It's going to be more runny. I <laughs> don't even have to worry about that. It'll be more liquidy, more runny. Um, so it will allow it to move. So to reiterate, if you can use a thicker gel, definitely do that. So for this nail, same exact concept, a higher concentration of the crystals, um, at the top of the nail and then um some of those big ones towards the center not close to the edge and then um you see me I'm using a flash cure flashlight to kind of set those in just because they were running you know what I mean so <laughs> I use that flash cure light to flash it before I put in the light just so it wouldn't move as much so again repeating the steps
So since we applied the top coat and the crystal gel at the same time, we did not have to seal around the crystals. You definitely can apply this in a different way. This is not the, with my air quotes, the right way to do it. This is the way I chose to do it because I thought it would be simple um, for this set. So there's many ways to go about everything. Find your style. This is what I chose in this video. Um, tell me down below which hand do you like? Do you like from the cuticle, cuticle bling or the free edge, the French bling? Tell me down below. Um, of course, we're going to leave a diamond emoji because look at this bling. Look at it. Look at it. Diamond emoji. That's all I ask for you. Thumbs up. Diamond emoji. Subscribe. I thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to check out the link for the Patreon in the description bar. Um, and yes, leave that diamond emoji. I thank you guys for watching so, so much. Oh, yeah. I'd email me about one on one classes if you're interested. Um, I'll put the email address in the description bar as well as topscott.classes at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.